Today, I want to share with you a class of pens that I think are really, really cool. Um, but maybe a word on just the fountain pen hobby to begin with. I've noticed through these videos that I've made that sometimes I'll make a video of a pen I think is really cool and uh, great value, really interesting, like the Metropolitan with the stub nib, for example, and nobody watches it. And then I'll make a video of a pen that I think is pretty mundane, pretty ordinary, like the uh, Platinum 3776, and it gets a ton of views. So that actually, you know, it makes me really happy to know that people don't necessarily share my taste in fountain pens. If everyone liked the same thing I liked, it'd be a pretty boring hobby. So that said, I think this topic is really, really interesting. And that pretty that probably means no one will watch it. Um, but anyway, this is the mid tier of uh, Japanese pens, and I think there's a lot of value to be had in this range. So first of all, what do I mean by mid tier Japanese pens? I mean, I'm talking about the pens that are typically in the forty to eighty dollar price range. They are just before you get into the gold nib offerings from these these brands, but above the entry level pens. So let's start with this one. Uh, this is the Pilot uh, Lucina. There are some themes across all of these pens that, that I'll talk about just up front. So the first is they are all steel nib pens. They are all I would say underrepresented or underappreciated here in the US. And another thing that makes these unique is they have nibs that are unique to the model. So this is the Pilot Lucina. This pen is about $50 depending on where you buy it from. And you see it has a very interesting steel nib. This is a number five size nib. So if I pull the Custom 74, you can see it's the same size as the gold nib in the Custom 74, but this is a stainless steel version. And what makes this interesting is that every pen Pilot makes um, priced under this has a much simpler steel nib. So this is the Pilot Prayer, for example. This pen is not much less expensive than the Lucina, but this has the Platinum, or the Platinum, the Pilot stainless steel nib, same nib as you find in the Metropolitan, the Kakuno, um, I'm probably missing some others, this is the, the Prera, um, but when you get into the Lucina range, you get a different nib, so I find that's, that's pretty interesting. And just a spoiler alert, I'm going to I'll give you a writing sample of this particular pen um, versus the other ones later because this pen has the nicest nib of the pens here. So I'll do a writing sample of this one later on. So that's Pilot. So next, let's move on to Platinum. Platinum, there's two pens here that I, I consider in this price range. The, the first is the Platinum Cool. And you can see, like with the Pilot, this one has a, a different nib than what you find in Platinum's lower priced pens. So I have here a Platinum Plus Year, which has the same stainless steel nib as the Preppy. And you can see when you step up to the cool, you get a different nib, which I think is, um, excuse the pun, I think it's pretty cool. Um, and this, this nib writes uh, a lot nicer than the nib that you find in the Preppy. So, this pen is about 30 to $40, depending on where you get it, and I think it's a tremendous value for that price. Next up, Platinum Procyon. Um, this is the only pen I have here today that is uh, metal. Um, I don't know what kind of metal, maybe aluminum or something, it's fairly light. Um, this also has a unique nib to this range. Uh, this one doesn't really count because I swapped it for the 14 karat gold nib from a 3776. But this pen with a steel nib runs anywhere from $40 to about $60, depending on where you buy it. 
and I think it offers quite a bit for that price. Because if you compare this to something like um, you know, a Platinum Plus Year, for example, it is a substantially nicer pen. And I think this pen actually holds its own in terms of build quality and in terms of feature set to something like a 3776. Um, of course, it doesn't have the, the gold nib, um, but at a fraction of the price of the 3776, this is a very nice offering. So next up, we have Sailor representing today, and I'm doing these in sort of rapid fire just to make this uh, video as short as possible and hopefully more enjoyable, but Sailor really representing here. So I'll go in price order. This first one is the Sailor, uh, I think it's called the Stardust. It's only available with a fine nib, but what's really interesting about this nib is that for Sailor fans out there, this looks a lot like the stamping on Sailor's 14 karat gold nib. It even has the size indication um, on the same spot. So this is a very different nib than what you get in the Sailor 1911 Campus for Compass? Compass, I think. I think it's called the Compass, the, the lower priced version of, of Sailor pens. That pen is uh, a piece of crap, in, in my opinion. I think if, if that's your favorite pen, I'm sorry, but I don't think very highly of that pen. But this pen, which is in the $35 price range, is a very, very nice pen. So you have a very nice cap, very nice banding, um, very nice material. It has like a nice um, glitter pattern to this material that, that's actually fairly subtle. I know it's, it's showing up quite a bit on, on camera here, but in person, it's, it's pretty subtle. The threads are very smooth. Um, and the nib is very nice. It's a lot of pen for $35. Next up, this is a pen I didn't know existed until recently. This is called the Sailor 1911 Casual. I left the price tag here so I can show it to you. It is 5,000 Japanese yen, which is in today's market about 40 bucks. So not an expensive pen, but what I find interesting about this, uh, not expensive relative to other Sailor pens, I should say. Um, what I find interesting about this is looking from the outside, this just looks like a 1911 standard. It's the same resin, it's the same band, it has it's the same band up here, uh, it has the same section, Everything is the same to the 1911, except for the nib, which you see has the new Sailor logo, since this is, I believe, a fairly new offering from Sailor, but it's a, it is a stainless steel nib. This one is an extra fine, but this is basically the same thing as the 14 karat 1911 standard, but without the gold nib. And for about 40 bucks, you know, spoiler alert, out of all of these pens, this one wins in terms of value because this is a lot of pen for $40. And then finally, a pen that confuses me a little bit, but I think is rather cool. So I'll show it to you. This one still has a price tag here. I, I left it here so I can show this to you. It is 7,000 yen. So call that 55, 60 bucks. Um, the reason why this is confusing to me is for a couple things. First, the pricing. I actually think the 1911 Casual is a nicer pen than this, which is called the Sailor Reglus. But this is priced 40% higher than that pen. So that's confusing point number one. And you can see, you know, even the, the nib is not as nicely finished as that pen. It just, it doesn't feel as nice as that pen and it's priced higher. So that's point one. Point two, in Sailor's marketing, they talk about this pen having a metallic finish so that it looks like it's a, it's a metal body, but this is actually plastic. So it's, it's a very nicely finished plastic. I'm sure it's you know, painted and polished. I'm not sure why they just didn't make it metal. 
if they want to make it a metal pen, just make it a metal pen. I'm, I'm not, you know, it, it confuses me why they're trying to make the resin look like metal. You can clearly see with platinum as an example, you can make a metal pen for this price range easily. It doesn't, you know, and you can even go cheaper. You can go metal pen with a plazier. So I'm not entirely sure why Sailor found the uh, need to make a resin pen look like metal, but um, it is a pretty cool pen. This is not my favorite in the lineup. It's a little bit thin for me. Um, I think it's a little bit uh, strangely priced at more expensive than the 1911 Casual, but I do think it's an interesting offering um, and something you don't really see a lot in the States. So those are the pens I wanted to show you. Here's all of them, so you can have one more look. Um, so in terms of interesting i think these are all very interesting offerings i am a bit surprised they don't see as much love as as other pens in in our fountain pen hobby i think all of these are great but if i had to pick one for the best value it'd be the sailor hands down but best writing experience overall goes to this Pilot Lucina, which I mentioned earlier. So let me go ahead and give you um, a quick writing example, quick writing sample from this pen so you can see it. And you can excuse the writing here. I was listing out the pens I was going to show you earlier today. So this is the Pilot Lucina. It's a medium nib. And this is Pilot blue black which is you probably know my know by now my go-to ink it's my favorite ink um, regardless of price I think it it looks great it, be, it performs really well it's slightly water resistant it's not too wet it's just ideal for me um, this nib is really really nice it writes a lot like a pilot number five um, 14 karat gold nib, but it's, like I mentioned, it's stainless steel. It's extremely well tuned. You can write in handwriting or printing. It's really, really nice. And for the price, this is marginally more expensive than something like a Pilot Prera. And just a theme going on with these pens and why I love these pens so much um, compared to what else is out there uh, within this fountain pen hobby. I think this class of pens offers a lot of value in the, the unique design of the pens, the, um, and especially the fact that the nibs for all of these are unique to these models. So you get a very nice nib, a very nice writing experience for the money without having to step up to something like a gold nib pen. And if you think about this price range and what else is out there and very popular for the, the fountain pen hobby, you'd be thinking about pens like the Twisby, you know, Diamond 580, that range of pen, which, you know, those are really nice pens, have a lot of cool features, a lot of cool colors, very nice pens. But I think these, these options offer a lot of value as well and I don't think they get the attention they deserve. So wanted to show these to you. I uh, hope that was a fun video and I'll talk to you guys later.